Uh, my husband's coming back. Just, just take whatever you want. And just, just get out. Hello, everybody. Let's talk about Annabelle, a recent horror release that is a spin-off of The Conjuring. And The Conjuring is a movie that I really liked, one of the better horror movies I've seen of late. Can't really say the same about Annabelle, I'm afraid. Um, I didn't hate this one by any stretch. It, it was just okay, really. It's it, There were some good things about it, but it had a lot of problems as well. And most of the problems are with the writing and with the story. Uh, the story for this movie, uh, at least on paper, doesn't look too bad. Uh, basically, there's this young couple that's expecting a child, and one night they are attacked by these crazy demonic cultists who are trying to commit some ritualistic murder in order to summon some kind of demonic entity or some such bullshit. And fortunately for the young couple, they are not successful thanks to some last second intervention by the police. I mean, they get in there just in the nick of time and blow one of the cultists away. And the other one doesn't give the police a chance to shoot her. She just offs herself with a knife to the throat. And as she lays there bleeding out while she's cradling this uh, porcelain doll that belongs to this young couple that they are eventually going to pass on to their daughter when she's born, uh, some of her blood drips onto the doll, and I guess that's enough to latch this demonic entity or whatever onto the doll. And, of course, if you've seen any kind of demonic possession movie, you know what happens from there. At first, there's just little things, like the doll will change positions somehow on its own whenever they look away, or they'll find it in a different room than what they left it in. And then... Uh, at some point, the mother starts seeing these weird visions, and doors start opening and closing on themselves. You, you know the drill. And while that's not particularly original, it probably could have at least been passable if it wasn't for that fucking doll. Because here's the thing. The allegedly true story that this movie is based on, uh, there is a real Annabelle doll... But the real Annabelle doll is actually a Raggedy Ann doll that was supposedly possessed by some demon or something. And I can understand if they couldn't use a Raggedy Ann doll for the movie because they couldn't get the licensing rights or whatever. I, I get that, but... Surely they could have chosen something that didn't look so obviously fucking evil as the doll in this movie. I mean, at the instant that thing shows up on screen, it, the characters do not react to it in any sort of realistic way at all. I mean, the, the, the doll is given to the, the mother-to-be by her husband, and as soon as she lays eyes on this doll, she is so enamored by this thing. She, you would have thought that the husband just gave her a ring from Tiffany's or something at the way she is reacting to this fucking doll. And nobody would ever react that way. I mean, that, you see this face right here. Would you think, oh, that is so precious? No! No, of course you wouldn't. You would be freaked out. Like some of you were probably just freaked out then. And a few of you may have soiled yourselves. And if so, I apologize. But... Seriously, no one would ever react this way, and I know no one would react this way, because no one in that fucking theater was reacting this way. That's for damn sure. No, there, there was a mix between either, you know, gasping in horror at the scary sight of this doll, or just uncontrollable laughter because of how over-the-top it was. I was probably closer to the laughter camp, really. This, this fucking doll, and everyone in the movie loves this doll. And no one would ever think that. There's just no way. And another problem with the writing in this movie, uh, normally when you have this movie where, you know, there's this one person that's being haunted at first, because it always starts with one person, and then eventually everyone else catches on. But at, at first it's the wife, and everyone else that she comes in contact with, her husband, uh, this neighbor of theirs that runs a bookstore that just happens to sell quite a few books on the occult, uh, their priest, 
they're all just a little too quick to believe her story. You know, I mean, the, the bookstore lady and the priest believe her almost immediately. The husband is at least a little skeptical at first and thinks, you know, oh, it's just, you know, postpartum depression or something. Your hormones are a bit out of whack, so you're not, not quite in your right mind. Whatever. And, but, but he does come around and comes around a little too quickly without having any real proof. They pretty much just take her at her word. And that, that threw me off just a little bit. I was also a little bit bothered by their extreme lack of effort to get rid of this doll once they suspected that there was something weird going on with it. I mean, at first, when, you know, little weird things start happening, eventually the wife does convince her husband, hey, something's wrong with this doll, I don't know what, but could you please just get rid of it? And husband's like, okay, sure, so he throws it in the trash. And shortly afterward, they move, which is something I've been seeing a bit more in horror movies lately. Whenever they're in a haunted house, they leave. That's the logical step. And this movie does the same thing. That's good. Of course, it never works. But at least it makes sense for people to do that. But after they move, as they're unpacking stuff, they open this one box, and sure enough, there's the doll. How did it get there? I don't know. And... You would think they would immediately try to throw it away again, but instead the wife is like, no, you know what? You gave this to me as a gift. We'll keep it. Why? You, and then they keep the damn thing until almost the very end of the movie, and it never occurs to them to even attempt to try to get rid of or destroy this doll. Like, like, the whole time I'm thinking, is burning it out of the question for some reason? I mean, again, would it work? Don't know. Probably not. But at least it would be logical to attempt that. I know if I was in that position, that doll is going in the fucking oven, and I'm cranking it up all the way, and I am going to stand there and watch that thing burn. I, <laughs> I mean, that's... That just seems like the logical step. No one attempts this. It's not until the very end where it finally occurs to them, you know what, let's try to get rid of this, and the priest even has to tell them, you know what, please let me take this. Let me take it away, take it to holy ground, maybe it'll weaken the demon's power then. Of course it doesn't work, but at least he tries. I'll give him that, but yeah, the fact that someone has to tell this couple, hey, you need to get rid of this fucking doll, and it never occurs to them on their own, just, oh. No, no, no. Stupid. So, yeah, there's... A lot of problems with it, but there are some good moments here and there. There are a few scenes that are uh, genuinely creepy, and like uh, there's this one scene that I'm sure some of you have probably seen in the trailers, where this this uh, the woman sees this image of a little girl that's running towards her as a door is slowly cr closing, and yeah, you know what happens after that. There's another scene involving an elevator that I I don't want to give too much away, but that was very well done. Uh, there are some moments towards the end of the movie that uh, unfortunately reminded me a little too much of The Exorcist. Uh, not that these scenes were rather poorly done or anything, it's just they felt a little bit like a ripoff and really just reminded me that I could be watching a much better movie. Now as far as this movie's direction, I don't really have any complaints there, uh, which kind of surprises me. This was directed by John R. Leonetti, who um, hasn't really made much of a name for himself as a director. He's primarily a cinematographer by trade. In fact, according to his IMDb page, he's only directed two movies prior to this. One was The Butterfly Effect 2, which I never saw, and the other one is Mortal Kombat Annihilation. So, based on that, you can understand why I wasn't too optimistic about this. <laughs> Yeah, because that one was pretty bad. But to be fair, that was 20 years ago. You would think he's learned something since then, and apparently he has, because this was so much better than Mortal Kombat Annihilation, for sure. And yeah, it was, on a technical level, there's not really much to complain about here. It's very well shot. The special effects are very well done. Uh, as far as the 
acting, I don't really have any complaints there either. There aren't really any standout performances, but everyone was fine. Uh, yeah, really, it all just comes down to the writing and that fucking doll. It just, it really doesn't work. And also, calling this a spinoff of The Conjuring seems kind of like a cash grab, really, because the only connection it has to The Conjuring is the very first scene of the movie which is basically taken from the first scene of The Conjuring, and also the very end where they show the doll in the glass case in the Warrens Museum. And, and the Warrens never show up in this movie at all, and even if you are familiar with the story that this movie is based on about the real Annabelle doll, it has almost no resemblance to that either, so I would not be surprised to find out that this movie was originally not supposed to have any connection to The Conjuring, and they just crammed a reference in there just to, you know, tie it in for a cash grab. I would not be surprised at all. Um, I don't know for a fact that that's what happened, but it, it certainly could have. So as far as a recommendation, I can't recommend paying full price for this by any means because it has just too many problems. But since there is some good stuff in here as well, I don't want to say avoid at all costs either. So I'm going to say this is worth a rental. Maybe a matinee if you really want to see it on the big screen, but, but definitely don't pay full price. But honestly, I don't think you should pay any price on the big screen and just rent it. Uh, or better yet, rent The Conjuring, because <laughs> the, the movie this is allegedly spun off from, because it's a much better movie. And yep, that's, I guess, about all I have to say about Annabelle. So till next time, take care.